Hey there, this is Mike and you're listening to Feeling Twisty. I'm really glad you're here. What I've noticed about myself, and maybe you've noticed the same thing about yourself, is I used to stress over the details. I would think of something I wanted and then wonder, how can I do this? What can I do to make this happen? Most of my life was spent on worrying about the answers to those questions. And those answers usually involved a lot of hard work on my part, maybe some manipulation, begging someone for help, begging someone for their attention. Even after finding Neville, exploring the power of imagination, I still found myself worrying about how I was going to get the life I wanted. There were many times I'd assumed the feeling of my wish fulfilled. Then within a few minutes, my mind would be running the same old subroutine of doubt, worrying about the details, trying to figure out how I get from where I am presently to where I want to be. The truth is, I wasn't dwelling in the state of my wish fulfilled. And that came down to the heart of the matter. I didn't really believe that imagining creates reality. If I truly believed to the point of knowing, I could not worry. In Neville's 1963 lecture, Our Real Beliefs or What We Live By, he says, Do I really believe that imagining creates reality? If I do, I couldn't worry. For worry is to only conjure what I fear in this world. For worry is an imaginal act. I couldn't possibly be concerned about anything if I really believe that imagining creates reality. That quote right there is life changing. It was for me. If I believe that I am only experiencing what I imagine, then why spend any moment worrying? By a simple movement in imagination, I can completely alter the course of my life because the course I've been on is only what I've been imagining. And the course I was on for most of my life was believing in an outside force, that there was a God up there and a Satan over here trying to destroy me and cause all kinds of heartache for me, never realizing that I was only experiencing my assumptions. I cannot experience anything that I have not assumed to be true. I used to believe in a Satan, a real Satan out there, a menacing devil whispering in my ear, tempting me to sin. I don't believe that now. I know that isn't true. The only Satan is doubt. And sin means to miss the mark. So I have a desire, but I doubt my ability to have it. I'm sinning. I'm missing the mark. So in that way, yes, the devil can cause me to sin. Doubt, Satan, will make me miss the mark. That's the only thing that could stop me, is doubt. If I doubt my ability, that is the thing that can stop me. Whether or not I doubt my ability to transform my life through imagination, I'm experiencing imagination all the time. I don't have to do it intentionally to be confronted with it. There's a great story from Neville's 1966 lecture, Free or Slave, that illustrates this. Now, the story is quite long. I'm not going to read it all to you. I'll summarize it, but I recommend you read it for yourself. This man was some type of designer. Neville wasn't sure exactly what, but really that doesn't matter. <laughs> he was sitting at his desk one day at work, bored. So he started thinking there must be a better way to work and double my income. So he imagined a little scene implying it was so. He had moments when he would doubt but he would stop right there and reenact the scene he imagined. And within a couple of weeks, a man he knew began urging him to go to work with him. And the salary was exactly double his current income, exactly what he had imagined. After working at his new job for a while, he began thinking, why work? Why not have an income equal to all that I need without having to work? So he imagined another little scene implying he had the money to do it. He would go to sleep dwelling in the wish fulfilled. And within a couple of weeks, an old friend contacted him. This friend had inherited a, a lot of money, and he insisted he have some of it. And the amount of money that his friend gave him was exactly the amount he imagined. So he dropped that job and started living the life he really wanted, this carefree, uh, work-less lifestyle, living on the beach or spending time on the beach. And then one day he got a call from a stranger insisting 
that he go to work for him. He didn't even know what the man did, but he decided to meet him anyway. And when he entered the man's office, he realized he imagined this very scene a while back. Sometime before that, while still working at his old job, he was sitting there at his desk just wandering around in imagination. And he imagined walking into this office, seeing the same office, looking out the same window with the exact same view. Even the trees and the plants were the same. And the man in the office was the man he imagined. Exactly everything like the picture he conjured in imagination. Now, the man telling the story to Neville came to this conclusion. Imagining creates reality in the most determined, definite manner man could ever imagine. Whether or not he believes it, he can't avoid this principle that imagining creates reality. And it is not only the intentional imaginal act, but every imaginal act. So how do you get from the point, or how do you get to the point of knowing that imagining creates reality? Really knowing it? Well, test it. Like the Bible says, test yourselves. Don't you realize that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. To fail the test is to think of some being outside of you as God. But the Bible tells us over and over that God is I am. My awareness of being. And nothing in creation was made by anything else. I cannot experience anything without first imagining it. Without first being conscious of it. I was talking to a wonderful couple last night. They were just starting a new business venture, uh, and they were telling me about it, but they spent most of their time talking about how awful their previous boss was. They were focused on how he mistreated them, and he's still out to get them. They happened to listen to my podcast every now and then, so I told them to try what I talk about on here. Instead of giving life to how bad the old boss was, Decide what they really want out of this new business and assume the feeling of it already being true. I encourage them to test it. Imagine something lovely for themselves and watch it unfold in their lives. I believe they will. And the next time I talk to them, they'll have some marvelous stories to tell me. And don't just test it once. Do it all day long. Don't just pick the one big desire. You, you all, we all have them, right? Maybe yours is money. Maybe yours is health or relationships. But don't just pick the one thing and imagine that being fulfilled and then going about your day uh, moping around, feeling sorry for yourself, worrying about everything else. Test your true power all the time with everything, every little desire. Start your morning imagining the day you want with full expectation of it playing out exactly as you desire. Go to sleep in the feeling of your wish fulfilled. You want to double your income? Okay. Ask yourself how you would feel if you already had doubled it and sustained that feeling, trusting that it will come about perfectly. And when or if you notice you're doubting, stop right there and reenact the little imaginal scene if you want, that, that scene that implies your wish is fulfilled. Or bring up that feeling again. That feeling, that was the answer to your question. How would I feel if I were already this? Remind yourself that you've already experienced it in imagination and knowing that imagining creates reality, that it must come about in this physical arena. Your state determines your thoughts. So I'm not talking about battling your thoughts or trying to... Uh, Scream out affirmations to drown out the doubt, the doubtful thoughts or the worry. No, that's coming from the state of mind you're in, your state of consciousness. So when you notice the doubt, don't judge it. Don't beat yourself up over it. Just notice it. Get back into the state of your wish fulfilled. As you continue to dwell in that state, the worry disappears. Because how could you worry about it if you already have it? Getting to the point of knowing that imagining creates reality is a state of consciousness too. That's a state. Just like not understanding anything I'm saying or thinking I'm crazy. That's a state of consciousness. So why not start there? Assume you know all of this. Assume you know and are absolutely certain. 
beyond just belief, but absolutely knowing that imagining creates reality. Assume that state of consciousness and watch. I promise you, things will unfold for you and you'll look back one day and realize, oh, wow, this is amazing. I used to imagine within certain limitations, limitations of tradition and society. So there was a maximum, a limit to what I thought was possible. Yeah, I could imagine I could do this and that, but I might not be able to imagine this. I could imagine doubling my income, but could I imagine having or living financially free in a way that I don't even have to work? Mm, I don't know. I think I still need to work because that's what society says. I still need to put in my 40 hours a week because that's what we do in this country. Pull ourselves up by the bootstraps and get out to work. Get a job, hopefully with a good dental plan and health insurance. All of these things that I thought were set rules. And so I would believe that I could imagine within those, that set of rules, which you certainly can, that's possible. But why not push through that, pierce that veil of tradition and society? Obeying conventional wisdom never sat well with me, and it certainly doesn't now. I think this man in the story was the same way. He'd already proven to himself that he is the operant power by doubling his income and decided he was done with work. He was done with what tradition and society said, that you have to go to work to be successful, to live the life you want. He just wanted to enjoy a carefree lifestyle, and he got it. That part of the story reminded me of a dear friend of mine, and I'm certain he's listening right now. This is the life he wants. He's told me that. He wants a life like that, to be financially free and to be able to just enjoy life, spend it on the beach, having fun. I want to tell him right now, you've got it. Trust the Father within you, your imagination. There's another quote from Neville that I want to share from the 1966 or 1969 lecture, Revealed Truth. Now, in this lecture, he's talking a lot of, uh, about the promise the fulfillment of scripture within us, getting us to the point of total recall where we remember who we really are. So here's the quote. The purpose of all of it is that you will be able to wish anything into realization. I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. No longer will you be a slave to the world or afraid of anything, for you will know that you are one with its creator. Rather than going to bed worrying about how you're going to meet a pressing commitment, go to bed dwelling upon what I have told you, and the commitment will be met. Your father knows what you need. Your father's imagination. Seek first the kingdom of heaven, and all these things will be added unto you, all the things that you want. Luke 17, 21 says, The kingdom is not discovered in one place or another, for God's kingdom is already expanding within you. I know it's expanding within you, or you wouldn't be the slightest bit curious about what Neville talks about, and you certainly wouldn't be interested in listening to me. So it's already started within you. Ah, yes. Isn't that exciting? So why not dive right in? Assume you already remember who you are, that you have experienced Scripture and enjoy this adventure, and share it with me. I want to hear from you at feelingtwisty at gmail.com or find me on Facebook at feelingtwisty. I love you. I really do. This is Feeling Twisty. Feeling Twisty.